Hello, my name is Lara Zacharia, and I'm a functional medicine trained pharmacist and certified nutrition specialist. And I'm here to talk to you today about nutrition and kidney health. So let's first get right down to the basics and break down nutrition into its three basic components, macronutrients, micronutrients, and phytonutrients. Macronutrients, macro meaning big, refer to the nutrients that are physically larger in size. Those are your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates. And often when we eat these sources of these macronutrients, they break down into smaller components. So we break proteins down into amino acids, fats break down into fatty acids, and carbohydrates break down into simple sugars. And that process happens during digestion and then once those uh, macronutrients are broken down into those simpler forms, the body then assimilates that and uses it to fuel the rest of what the body needs to do. Then there are micronutrients, micro meaning small, are your minerals and your vitamins. Now they might be smaller in size, but they're extremely important and they play a huge role in every singular cellular function in the body. They're also part of other reactions that are happening in the cell. They help to power the mitochondria and they help to feed and fuel our whole neurological system and our muscles and all of our uh, skeletal structure. Third are phytonutrients, and this might be a new term. So phytonutrients refer to some of the natural compounds that are found in whole foods. They lend color to those foods. The combination of phytochemicals and compounds make certain foods green while they make other foods red, they make other things orange and yellow and beige, et cetera, right? And the different combinations are in those foods create these unique combinations of phytonutrients. And what we're learning about phytonutrients is that they're becoming more and more important as we understand the value of eating a plant-based diet and eating a diverse plant-based diet at that, because then we're getting all these different kinds of nutrients. We're getting various combinations of colors, different kinds of phytonutrients, different kinds of micronutrients as well. So it's really important to understand that the different kinds of food that you take in are gonna have some variety of these three types of nutrients. And there's not one that's specifically more important than another, they're all important and they all lend to the big picture. Another key concept to understand is that there is often an optimal way to get the most out of your diet. That means that eating food nutrients in some form, whether it be cooked or raw, whether it be whole or processed, is going to change the way that your body absorbs and assimilates those nutrients. So for example, we're often talking about eating a whole food diet. What does that mean? That means avoiding any unnecessary processing that happens to that food. For example, in order to make bread, you have to take wheat and you have to process it in a way to turn it into a flour and then it goes through another set of processes in order to be enriched flour. And then from there, the flour is baked into the bread. Often a lot of our processed foods also undergo additional processes as well as have additional ingredients and sometimes chemicals added that help to preserve and maintain the structure to make it look pretty for it to have nice good color so that we want to buy that product. Often a lot of those processes actually strip away some of the benefits of that food. And so we want to be as whole as possible. So instead of having cereals that are made out of processed grains, we actually want to eat the whole grain in its original form. So oatmeal in its whole form is going to be better for you than a cereal or a bread, for example, that's made out of oat flour. That also holds true for how we might optimize our nutrient intake from vegetables. You don't necessarily have to eat your vegetables raw, but the fresher they are, the more well-preserved that they are, the more nutrient density that they have. The brighter the color, the more rich the phytonutrients are. Sometimes cooking those vegetables actually makes them easier for us to digest and easier for us to assimilate those nutrients. At the end of the day, we wanna make sure that those are fresh, 
And as much as possible, we want to try to optimize their cooking time so that they're not too mushy, not too over-processed either. So again, the more processing something has, usually it starts to strip away at its benefit. Another thing we wanna consider is that processing also often brings out a lot of the simple carbohydrates in that food. And so you end up making it alter your blood sugar levels and it impacts your insulin levels as well. And that's something we want to avoid as well. Last but not least, whenever we process foods, if there's any fat component to that food, fats could be actually very good for us and very healthy, but over-processing of fats and the processing of fats at very high temperatures, which is often what happens in the food processing process, will alter and denature those fats, making them inflammatory and unhealthy. So again, that is these are these are basic concepts that we want to dive into with a little bit more detail. So one, understand that nutrients have a good form and a less good form. Often we want to try to focus on whole sources of foods versus processed foods or enriched foods so that we get the most out of them. Whole plant-based diet that has a lot of different vegetables and fruits in it is going to give you a much richer source of vitamins, minerals, as well as those phytonutrients. You're also going to get a rich amount of fiber, which is an important piece to help uh, improve the stomach and the microbiome and digestion as well. Uh, we also want to think about preparation method, overcooking foods. For example, overcooking animal protein can create some toxic unwanted side effects. So cooking things at the right temperature, also using the correct cooking methods, using the correct kinds of oils when we're cooking is also really crucial and can help improve the um, overall benefit that you get from that food and ensure that it doesn't become more inflammatory than we want it to be. Three, nutrients don't work in silos. In other words, nutrients work together in combination in order to optimize their benefit. We want them eat them all together. And often if we're supplementing them, we often want to supplement them in the right combination so that they can work their best. Four, micronutrients can act as cofactors. Cofactors meaning that they help to support certain processes in the body. They act to enhance certain processes in the body. And if those micronutrients aren't available, um, then we're unable to perform those activities. And I'm gonna give you an example of that in just a couple of slides. And number five, nutrition should also be tailored to the individual as much as possible. And we'll talk a little bit about how the old way of looking at nutrition, sort of this one size fits all box and where the shortcomings have been in the past. So first, preparation method. As it turns out, there's something called AGE or advanced glycation end products. And this happens when we heat something up at a very high temperature and a chemical reaction occurs between the sugars and the fats in that food. And the, sometimes there's also other um, processes that can also activate proteins in certain foods. When this chemical reaction occurs, this can create some damage to the cells in the body. So when we eat things that, for example, are char-grilled char or overcooked or dry cooked, this often increases the amount of advanced glycation end products. And as it turns out that the higher the temperature of the cooking method, the longer the length of time and the absence of, of moisture can alter these uh, advanced glycation end products. And so the best way to prepare a meal is actually to use a moist cooking method to cook as low and slow as possible in order not only to retain moisture, but also to preserve and prevent the formation of these glycation end products. We also know that cooking can impact the phytochemical content of certain vegetables. Overcooking can often reduce a lot of these phytochemicals or change their structure in a way that uh, might damage them or reduce our ability to utilize them. So steaming methods, for example, using water or oil can also sometimes leach those nutrients into that um, vehicle. So understanding that in order to maximize vegetable phytochemical content, often we want to use, again, the lowest needed uh, technique in order to soften up, bring out some of the nutrient content of that food, but without overcooking it, overheating it, 
or changing its composition too drastically. And that's going to be different from one vegetable to another. Remembering that these nutrients work in combination. And this is one example, for example, vitamin D when given solo doesn't work as well to enhance our vitamin D levels. It needs its friend vitamin K in order to enhance its benefits of improving uh, the density in the bone as well as preventing issues with the kidney. So it's really important to understand that often these nutrients work in combination. This is part of the reason why getting our nutrients from food is ideal. And if you're supplementing, it's best to, to, to use a broad approach than to go too aggressively in just for one nutrient at a time. And of course, if you're not sure, always work with a nutrition professional or a functionally trained uh, clinician who understands these combinations and can optimize them to your needs. Cofactors. So again, cofactors are these nutrients that work to enhance the ability of certain processes in the body. We have these chemical, biochemical reactions that are happening throughout our body all the time. And so it's really important to understand that you also need certain nutrients in order to power those reactions. Think of it as fuel for your car. You need to make sure that you're putting some sort of energy source in there so that these processes can run optimally and that we're doing enough throughout the, we're using them and there's enough throughout the body. So for example, here we've got detoxification. Detoxification is a two phase chemical process, phase one and phase two. Now phase one requires a certain set of nutrients to power those particular types of reactions. And phase two has another set of nutrients that power those phase of the reactions. So ensuring that you have enough of these nutrients in your system in order to power detoxification is important to make sure that we're doing a really good, efficient job at removing some of the toxins that we're exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. And lastly, nutrition is not a one size fits all. In the past, we would rely on these very broad approaches. We would study diets like the renal diet or a quote, heart healthy diet or a diabetes diet. And we would apply that to everybody. If you've got heart disease, well, you're going to get the heart healthy diet. If you've got diabetes, you're going to get the diabetes diet. And if you've got renal disease, you're going to get the renal diet. And as it turns out, dietary interventions have not been very successful. Now there's a lot of reasons why that is the case, but what we can say for sure is that we know now that we need to be more tailored in our approach to the way that we implement these diets. And that's why we talk about personalized nutrition. And personalized nutrition aims to do our best to take all the evidence that we have of what works and then look at individual people's genetics, their lifestyle, their environment, their culture, their background, their needs, and what their specific uh, health goals are. And then we try to do our best to tailor an approach that fits the, that combination of needs. No two people are going to be alike and no two people can have the same exact needs in terms of nutrients. And so again, working with a professional who understands this nuance, who can look at your history, who can understand your genetics and can tailor an approach that really fits your needs is the ideal strategy. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something today, I encourage you to follow us and to subscribe. And I thank you for your time and your attention.